Hi, Year 3. This week, your maths is division. Now, I've put some picture clues. Remember, think bus stop when you think of the formal method of division. Now, this week, I put them into word problems to help us make a bit more sense of the number sentences. So, this is the context of a bus stop, and this is how we taught you the method of division. So, hopefully, this will trigger some memories. You have to imagine there are 42 people waiting at a bus stop, and this bus can only sit seven people. It only has seven seats. So, how many buses will be needed to take all of those people to wherever they need to be? So, I'm reading my question, I'm understanding what it's asking me to do. It's asking me to group those 42 people into sevens. So therefore, my number sentence is 42 divided by seven. Now I can put it into a bus stop. 42 people at the bus stop. The bus can only take seven at a time. Now with this method, we draw a number line of sorts or a line. And we put zero here, the bus has collected no people yet. And 42 here, the bus needs to take 42. So, the first bus comes along and it picks up seven people. And we can put some dots in here to help us count on if we need to. Six, seven. Then, another bus is going to come along and it's going to pick up another seven more people. Seven, add seven, would get me to 14. Now, not everybody, you don't all need to use these dots, but if you know you find your seven times table tricky and you don't want to make any mistakes by counting on in sevens, use the dots to help you. It will help you be more accurate. Then another bus comes along and it picks up another seven. And 14 add that 7 gets us to 21. Now we need to get all the way to 42. So we're still not there yet. We can still keep adding on more groups of 7. Another bus comes along and it picks up another 7 people. 21 add 7 is 28. Another bus comes along and it picks up another group of 7. 28 add 7 gives us 35. Then another bus comes along and it picks up another group of seven and actually 35 add seven gets us to 42. So now we can work out how many buses were needed to take all these people. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six buses were needed to take all the people to where they needed to be. Let's check the context of the problem. Definitely buses. So my answer needs to state clearly that it was six buses that took all those people. Right, I've got another problem for us today. This time, it's a farmer. He's checked on his chickens and they've laid 103 eggs. Now, one egg box only holds six eggs and he wants to know how many egg boxes will he need for all those eggs? So again, another grouping. We've got 103 and we need to split that up into six boxes. Now we can still think bus stop because we put in our 103 and we put in our six. But this time instead of buses, we're filling egg boxes. So we draw our line. We put in our zero. We've filled no egg boxes yet and we need to put in 103 eggs. Now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, right, if I do jumps of six, that's going to be a lot of jumps of six to get to 103. Now I could use a little trick that we did teach you in class. You could do, instead of doing one jump of six, could you do bigger jumps of six? For example, could you do 10 jumps of six? Because all of you will know what 10 times 6 is, 10 lots of 6. So I'm going to do, and I need to get to 103, so 10 jumps of 6 would be 60. So I could easily do that there. So instead of it just being one jump, I've done 10 jumps all in one go. Then I think, could I do another 10 jumps of 6? Oh, no, because if I did another 10 jumps of 6, that would be another 60. 
and 60 add 60 would be more than 103. So could I do five jumps of six? Well, five jumps of six would be 30. 60 add 30 would be 90, so I could. So I could do five jumps of six, which would be 30. So 60 add 30 would get me to 90. Now, I can't do another five jumps of six because that would be too many. So I'm just gonna go back to doing jumps of one. So if I do one jump of six, that will get me to 96. Still could do another jump of six. I'm gonna do another one jump of six and that would get me to 96, add six, would get me to 102. Oh, okay. Right, well, I'm not going to be able to do another jump of six because I'm only going to get into 103. So let's count up how many jumps I've done. 10 jumps here plus five jumps is 15, 16, 17. So I've done 17 jumps, but I've got something left over. I've got one egg left over. I've only got to 102 eggs. So I've got one leg egg left over. So I can do that as remainder one. Now, the question was asking me how many boxes I needed. Well, I'm going to have 17 full boxes, but then I've got an egg left over. Now, that egg still needs a box. So therefore, I won't just need 17 boxes. I will need 18 boxes. Because that one egg left will still need to go in a box. So it's really important to read the context of the question carefully so you can get an accurate answer. Now this week, I've added on a different task in your home learning, and that is to be a teacher. I know, year three, you are fantastic at being teachers, and you are always spotting any errors we do as teachers or helping us correct and mark our work. So over to you. Maybe you want to pause the screen here, have a look at it, read my word problem carefully a couple of times, check my working out. A top tip is to work it out yourself, then compare your answer to my working out. Am I right? If I'm right, you can let us know over email saying that I was correct. If you think I am not correct, send us a picture of your working out to show me where I went wrong. Have fun year three and hopefully see you all soon. Bye bye.